This video will show you how to clean, maintain, and change the oil in your front and rear divs for our Traxxas Slash, Rally, and Stampede 4x4 model. Now the process is nearly identical for all the models that I just mentioned. And for this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do this with my Stampede 4x4. Now if performance is your game and you're into racing, well you're definitely going to want to pay attention to this. So the first thing that you're going to want to figure out is what to put in the div after you clean it. A lot of people ask if they can put the tracks of silicone grease inside the diff. Yes, you can do that. However, it's not going to perform as consistently as silicone diff fluid. In fact, I highly suggest that you go with diff fluid over any kind of grease. You can also use white lithium grease, but it is a thinner consistency than the black grease. And overall, it is going to overwork your diff and it could cause your motor to overheat. So the question is, what weight should you go with when you're choosing your diff fluid? Generally, a lot of people will use 7,000 to 30,000 for the front, 5,000 to 10,000 in the rear. You really do want to stick to a lower weight when you're on road and go to a higher weight when you're off road. However, if you're into nothing but speed runs going over 60 miles per hour, then they'll go ahead and tell you to go with a higher weight. For me, I'm going to be doing 30,000 in the front and 10,000 in the rear. So now that you know what you're going to be putting inside of the diff, you need to figure out what grease you're going to be putting on the outside of it. You cannot use diff fluid to coat the outside of a diff. You're going to have to use a grease. You can use Traxxas silicone grease without any issues. However, a lot of people do prefer to use an automotive grease, whether it be red or black. It just tends to stick to the gears better because, well, it's thicker. If you don't have access to automotive or Traxxas silicone, you can also use white lithium. The next thing that you're going to need is cleaning supplies because guys, things are going to get dirty. I highly suggest you go and get some coffee filters for this because they're cheap, they're durable, and they're lint free. However, if you don't have access to them, you can just go ahead and use some paper towels. To clean the teeth of the gears, you can use an old toothbrush, but I'm just going to go ahead and use some Q-tips and toothpicks. To make the whole process a bit easier, I'm also going to be using WD-40. Some people choose to use shock oil because it will dilute the grease and fluid and it makes it a bit easier to clean. Either way, I prefer WD-40 just because it's cheaper. On top of that, it is a good idea to have some latex gloves or thick rubber gloves because we are going to be dealing with chemicals and the last thing you need is that all over your skin. And the last thing that you're going to need is obviously some tools. For all the screws, you're going to need a 2.5, a 2, and 1.5 millimeter hex screwdriver or Allen wrench. Pliers to help you remove the pins for the A-arms and a wrench in order to take off the wheel nuts to remove the tires. Now that you have all your supplies, it's time to go ahead and get started. But before we do, I'm going to claim this right now. I am not liable for any damage that you cause to yourself or your RC. This is a loose guide and if you don't follow instructions or don't have prior experience to working on your RC, I highly suggest you don't do this. But if you're willing to go through with it, then let's get started. The first step is removing all four tires by undoing the 4mm nut that holds them on. So I'm going to start this process by working on the front first. If you want to skip ahead and see me working on the front diff, click on this link. If you want to skip ahead and see me working on the rear, click on this link. If you want to skip ahead and see me working on the rear diff, click on this link. If not, let's go ahead and get started by removing the front assembly from the chassis. It's held on by four screws. Two right here and one on each side. Next, you're going to go ahead and flip the RC over and you're going to remove the servo arm from the steering bell cranks. This screw right here. For the LCG chassis, you are going to have to turn the tire to the left. That way, it will give you access to the screw. And now you're ready to remove the front assembly. What you're going to want to do is bend those arms away from the chassis and pull back. It is going to take a little bit more muscle with the LCG. If the dry shaft comes out, don't worry about that. You can put that back into the chassis or just set that off to the side. Now it's time to remove the front bumper. It's held in with five screws, two on top and three on bottom. And now you should be able to slide the front bumper off. Set that to the side, and now you got to remove this plate by removing this screw. 
Go ahead and slide off this aluminum plate, use your pliers and pull out the pins. These are what hold in the A-arms. They should come loose, just like that. Now we're gonna flip it upside down and remove these two screws. Okay, now the bottom will be able to pop off. Just be careful not to get grease everywhere. We're gonna move to the front and remove the shock tower from the diff housing by undoing these four center screws. Once you get those four screws out, the diff housing is not gonna be held together. So you're gonna to wanna to hold it from the back and the front and pull it down and off the shock tower. Now just pull off the dry shafts and you got the diff housing. Now the front is gonna come off really easily, but before you do that, just go and hold it together and remove the dry shafts by undoing the grub screw that holds it on. You can also go and take this off by undoing this grub screw as well. And now we're ready to take this whole thing apart. First of all, like I showed you, that comes right off. Now the diff can only go in there one way because of the bearings are set different sizes on each side. So just pull that on out and then there we have the pinion gear which can come right out all you have to do is push the other side at this time i highly suggest that you go ahead and remove all the bearings hit it with some wd-40 wipe everything down and clean it up once everything is clean including the inside of each half of the diff housing you're also going to want to clean this bottom plate because that is the bottom of the diff housing and now it's time to take care of the fluid inside of the diff gear. The first step is removing all four of these screws. Once those screws are out of the way, you're just going to go ahead and lift off this metal disc. And now there's a couple things that you're going to want to watch out for. First of all, go ahead and remove, I think this is called the sun gear. And then there is a rubber seal. And you're going to want to set that off to the side. Make sure you don't damage that. Next, we're gonna move on to the planet gears. Now, these two planet gears that are in there are held in with a bar, and they're not attached to it. They literally are just slid onto it. And the last gear is on the end. And one thing I just noticed is that there is no oil in here, which is terrible. And what is left in here is in terrible condition. It looks like metal glitter or just literally liquid it's terrible that means all the gears have been grinding so I'm gonna go ahead and point this out between both of these planet gears you'll notice that one of them does have a washer on it now the one with the washer does not go on the metal disc it goes inside of the plastic casing but now I'm gonna go ahead and take off both of these rubber seals and now I'm gonna get everything together and spray it down with some WD-40 and clean it up. Now that everything's been cleaned up, it's time to put it all together. And I was able to get that washer off and clean it. So I'm gonna slide it onto one of the sun gears, followed by the rubber seal, just like that. Now I'm gonna slide it into the plastic casing, push it all the way down, get this metal bar, get the planet gear, slide it onto the bar, make it look almost like a bow tie. And now when you look inside the case, you'll see that there are grooves in it. So I'm gonna slide that right in there, just like this. And now it's time to go ahead and put some fluid in there. A lot of people wonder how much to put in there. I put anywhere in between half and full. So three quarters should do just nice. Once the dip fluid is in there, you're gonna get your other sun gear. You're gonna put the seal on the end, slide that all the way down, and then just stick it on top. The dip fluid should hold it down. Then you're gonna get your last seal and slide it into place. Now you'll see there's these little blocks on there, and you're just gonna slide it into in between these pegs that are found on each side. Next, you'll notice that there are corresponding holes for those four pegs. You're going to want to slide that perfectly into position and then put the screws back in. And you're going to want to tighten them in a star pattern. So top left to bottom right to bottom left to top right. You want this to seal evenly. You don't want to screw one side all the way in and then the other.
Now that your diff is taken care of, it's time to go ahead and start putting everything back together. First of all, we're going to get the big thin bearing and it goes on the plastic end. We get the big thick bearing and that goes on the metal end. Slide those on and now we're going to move on to the bearings that go into the back of the diff housing. One goes on the inside, one goes on the outside, and then we can go ahead and slide the pinion gear back in. Next, well, this can only go in one way, so let me put this bearing back on. Slide that into position, and it should be rolling nice and free. Next comes the messy part. You're going to get your grease, and you're going to put it on the inside of the teeth while rotating it. You want a good coating of this stuff on here. Not too much to fill the house, but enough to cover all the teeth. Once you get all that grease on there, all you have to do is put the housing back on, and you are ready to put this back on to all the front assembly. So with the diff housing in hand, what you're going to want to do is attach it to the shock tower. That way you don't have to keep holding it together. Slide it back into position and reattach these four screws. Now that that has been taken care of, you're going to get the base and slide it back onto the bottom. Make sure it's flush, then you're going to flip it upside down and then reattach these two screws. Once that's taken care of, you're going to flip it back over, get the bottom of the dry shaft, get the top of it, and then you're going to slide it back on and then you're going to reattach it to the output of the diff. Once the dry shafts are taken care of, you're going to swing around to the front, line up the A-arms and you're going to reinsert the pins. Once the pins have been reinstalled, you're going to reinstall this metal aluminum plate. Just remember that the curve goes on top and that is held in with a single screw. And finally, you can go ahead and reattach the front bumper. It's held on with the two screws on top and three on bottom. And now, before you slide it back on to the chassis, you are going to have to reinstall this part. And that, of course, is just held on with a grub screw. And now you can finally attach it back to the chassis. Make sure that the dry shaft is back in there, and then you just slide it back into place. Reattach all four screws, including the screw that attaches it back to the steering arm, and you're done. I will admit, this part of sliding the chassis back onto the front assembly is going to take some tough love. And with the LCG, it's going to be a bit tougher. Now that the front has been taken care of, it's time to move on to the rear. The back is nearly identical to the front, except for a couple of small differences. But I'm going to start off the same way. I need to remove the rear assembly from the chassis by undoing four screws. There's two screws on top, and then there's two screws on bottom. Once you remove all four screws, you're going to go ahead and grab the back and the chassis and pull them apart just like that. Sometimes this center spur gear is going to fall out. Just go ahead and shove it back into place. And now it's time to start working on this. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the rear bumper, or in this case, the wheelie bar. It's held in with five screws. Two on top, one in the back, and two on the bottom. And now I can go ahead and pull off the wheelie bar. This aluminum plate has to come off as well. And now, as good time as any to go ahead and pull out the pins that hold in the A-arms. Once that's done, the A-arms are going to come free, and now I'm going to remove the top of the dry shaft by undoing the grub screw that holds it on to the diff. Now that I took care of the dry shafts, it's time to remove the base by undoing the two screws on the bottom. After that, I can go ahead and take the rear skid plate right on off. Last step is to remove these four inner screws. Okay, and now the shock tower can slide right on off when we finally reach the diff. Now the housing will easily come apart. We're just going to go ahead and lay that down, pull out the diff gear, and then inside we have the pinion gear. I'm just going to pull that out as well. Now there is one bearing in there as well as a bearing on each side of the diff. We're going to pull this all apart and clean it with some WD-40 and wipe it down. Once everything is clean, including the insides of the diff housing, you're also going to want to clean the base of the skid plate because this is the bottom of the diff housing. Now it's time to work on the fluid inside of the diff. So just like with the front, we're going to be removing all four of these screws. With the screws out of the way, I can finally pull the diff apart. 
Inside you'll notice that it is really messy and it's really shiny too, which means the gears have been grinding. So it's a good time to go ahead and clean this out. So a couple of things to look out for. On this side, you'll see that there is a seal. And yep, I am unfortunate and this thing is ripped. It's not ripped beyond use, but I am gonna have to be very careful about that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and push out the sun gear. On this sun gear, there is a rubber seal. You can't see it because it's covered in fluid, but yes, it is there. Just like with the front differential, there is not a washer right here. On this side, I need to go ahead and pull out the planet gears. There's a center bar that I need to go ahead and lift straight up. On each side of this bar is a planet gear and they are not attached. You can easily just slide them off the bar. And yes, this stuff is gonna be really sticky, guys. <laughs> Now I'm going to go ahead and push the bottom and pull out the last gear. And yes, there is going to be a rubber seal on this one as well. And yes, this is a gear that has a washer on it as well. Pull that off. Now I'm going to use a bunch of WD-40 and clean all this as best as I can. Now that everything's cleaned up, it's time to put it all back together. So just like with the front, I'm going to get a sun gear. Slide the washer back on, followed by a rubber seal, which is blue now. I'm going to slide it into the back hole of the plastic casing, just like that. Push it all the way down, get this metal bar, put a planet gear on each side, make it look like a bow tie. And then I'm going to slide the bar right into this slot where there is a peg on each side of the bar. Come on, gotta get it in there just right. There we go. Now it's time to go ahead and fill it up with some more diff fluid. And just like with the front, I'm gonna fill it up three-fourths of the way full. Now that the oil has settled in there, I'm gonna get the other sun gear, slide that rubber seal on there, and then just stick it on top. Push it all down. I'm gonna get this last rubber seal and you'll see that there's these two box pieces. Those go in between the pegs and obviously the holes line up with where the screws go into it. Now, on this, you'll see that there are four little holes for those four pegs. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line this all up, slide it together and reattach the four screws. And, like I said with the front, you're going to want to tighten the screws in a star pattern. Now that the diff is back together, it's time to put it back into the housing. So the first thing you're going to do is get the biggest of the bearings and you're going to slide it into the front of the housing, just right here. Followed by the pinion. Goes in on only one way. <laughs> you're going to get the fat bearing and it's going to go on the metal side. And the thin bearing goes on the plastic side. Slide them all the way down, put them into place, and believe me, it can only go in there in one direction. Now we're going to get some awesome grease, put that onto the diff while spinning it, and you want to cover all of the teeth. You don't want to fill the diff housing, just cover the teeth really well. Okay, and that should do it. Now we can go ahead and slide the other half of the housing on and now we can reattach it to the shock tower. So you're going to want to have the pinion gear face the front of the RC. So just remember that so it's on the same side as the shocks. We're going to get the shock tower, slide it right back into position and then we're going to reattach those four screws. Once you take care of that you're going to want to go ahead and reattach the drive shafts. Next, you're gonna to wanna to get the rear skid plate and slide that right back into place. Followed by reattaching the rear A-arms. All you have to do is line them up, slide the pins in, make sure they go down all the way, just like that. We're gonna reattach the blue aluminum plate. Remember that the slots go down. And finally, we're gonna get the wheelie bar and slide that back on and reattach the five screws that hold it on. Two on top, one on the center back, 
and two on bottom. I'm also going to reattach the two screws that hold on the skid plate. Now that the rear assembly is completely back together, we can go ahead and reattach it to the chassis. Now you'll know on this side of the spur gear, there is two flat sides. There is two corresponding flat sides inside of there on the pinion gear. You're going to want to line those up and slide it together. Just remember on the bottom of the old slash and the Stampede 4x4, this lip needs to go underneath that lip. Once that's all back together, you're going to reattach the two screws on bottom as well as the last two on top. And I am finally done. The front and rear divs have been cleaned and filled with the fluid weight that I want. So the last thing I want to talk about is how often you should do this. As you saw with the front diff, there was no fluid in there. That's terrible. You never want to let that happen. Now the only reason why that did happen was that there was a previous owner to the Stampede 4x4 and it's quite clear he did not maintain them. So I would have to say if you drive your RC around regularly, I would say do it after a year. If you drive it non-stop all the time, you might want to consider cleaning it as early as six months. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to ask. I hope this video helped you out.